Okay, here we are in Pleasant Hill, starting the 640 turn. I've moved the Confederates. I haven't done any fire combat yet, but I wanted to... I, I don't always capture this moment, and I actually think it's kind of always interesting, the attack, rather than the after effects of it. Um, so here, you see the Confederate line kind of slipping around, hitting the flanks again on the Union side. They can ignore these units more or less. The Union can throw five points in and come in with a big nasty enfilade, and they may do that. Uh, but the Confederates assume they're not going to because five points is a lot in this game. That's, you know, uh, essentially a smaller wrecked brigade. Uh, so the advantage gained might not be sufficient. Certainly on one shot it won't be. Of course, having the additional units in play will enhance the Union position. So that might be the convincing point here. But it is risky because we've got Bagby up here and this guy's pretty safe but the, with his end flawed, but this guy's not. He can be shot. If he fails a morale check, they both run and the attack fails essentially. Um, of course, this attack by Clark over here could succeed. And then over here we have Burns, who's non, not in good shape either, who could get, end up falling back as well. Over here, we see the weight has shifted with the Union withdrawal from the gully. Uh, only lightly engaging really along the hill and trying to push the main force here and then going for a flanking attack just get them up on Pleasant Hill and hit them straight away across there of course it's actually safer to attack through the woods because uh, you have some defensive adjustment etc uh, so in a sense this is actually the weaker place to be attacking from but uh, the way the Union position is set up, they're trying to defend the entire hill. If they show a weak part here, the line could shift and start uh, getting some good attacks in there. If in, So if this falls back, the whole Confederate attack could end up shifting to some extent or another. It's tough when you're engaged, though, so the Union really does have to fall back for that to happen. Once you're engaged, you pay a price for getting out, and you'll see some of the units here, perhaps, are kind of divided up. So we've got Wall here, and uh, more of them here, but uh, Grishted in between, kind of divided up. The commands get all kind of split up, and you got to be careful because actually I have some units from Tappan's division over here, which would be Gauss, I think, and uh, Grishold. If though they can't combine fire with the other units, and they can't stack with them or anything like that, so that's kind of there was a reason not to send another brigade, the the uh, division over here, that second division, but. It felt like uh, it would be more helpful on this side and that I could do quite a bit with these units. Now, it's turned out it hasn't worked out quite that way, but I don't know if having another division over here would be terribly helpful, but it definitely has helped over there. Well, that was mixed results as, at best. Bagby's force did indeed get retreated from uh, the infantry it was charging up trying to hit. So, you know, it makes it less desirable to pull these guys in. It looks like we're holding the line over here. Although those big parrot guns are gone, they got captured um, without much of a fight really. Well, they were in flooded. Over on this side, we see streams of Confederate forces running back. That weak area of the hill, for the most part, they got repulsed, but one charged in did a melee and drove uh, some of Benedict's forces. Now he's not in a pleasant place right now. He's uh, he's not going to be happy with where he is. And likewise, here we had melee breaking through the lines. The, this is looking to be in danger of almost being pocketed. That would be hellish. We actually saw an effect of that. This uh, Dwight unit here was caught up here, routed. Got shot pretty bad, runs to here, gets shot some more on its way through. It lost uh, three strength points there, which means 
we're starting to see some pretty heavy things like the white is getting close to breaking uh hill is broken i think that had already happened oh no that happened over here yeah that was part of the attack there are some some sniping shots broke hill his forces went running back as a as a brigade um, one thing we're going to see, for example, Bagby, he can't rally his forces. He's got one guy here and the rest are running back. This is from the abandoned guns that got rallied. Uh, and now the Union's going to have to face that too. Burns has trouble. He's broken. We knew about that. But some of these others, McMillan, who's kind of uh, standing here in the center area. His brigade is almost broken. I've got to commit it, uh, at least to some extent. Maybe if I pull Shaw back, it won't be, I'll be able to do that. But Shaw's not in tremendously good shape. He'll be able to stand a little longer than McMillan will. But, you know, these armies are uh, grinding themselves down here. And as we push forward to 7 o'clock... The Union has more or less driven the Confederates back, even some pot shots destroying, you know, sending Burns' command just flying back because of the brigade effect in this issue. It looks like there's no real threat on this side. This side a little bit more dangerous, but we did push back the Confederates from the, uh, uh, what was left assaulting the hill area. Over here, not a lot of movement at all. Um, and there's still a big threat here. We got Dwight holding the edge here, and that's uh, scary. I pulled back a little bit, but I just couldn't disengage Shaw. He would have taken shots without being able to answer, and that's always a painful thing. He didn't end up paying too much price this turn, and he gets the next shot. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the things with this system. It's move, defensive fire, offensive fire. So the attacker moves in, has to take a shot. In this case, they were sitting there, they had to take a shot, but then they get to shoot back, and now they get to shoot back again before the Confederates get to fire again. So you always get kind of two shots in a row if you stand and hold. If you're attacking, though, you got to take the first shot before you return, and then, well, then you get two in a row after that first shot. So, you know, it's, it's just kind of an interesting system that way. Anyway, there we go. All right, a little bit of change. The Confederates push forward a little further. I a pin marker and perhaps more importantly they've got their supply wagon up so they're beginning to fix some of their ammo problems the union's been able to do it all along well since fairly early in the battle you can see uh, some union supply spent at some point it starts getting risky you, you don't want to just recover a one point unit or something but there's not a lot more battle left so saving ammunition doesn't seem terribly valuable do you see B's cavalry? This came slinging around. Not a charge. Couldn't do that, but used it like dragoons to get behind this uh, Dwight unit here and hit it from behind. It looks like Dwight's whole line is kind of collapsing. He's got a couple units stuck there. He kind of wants to get them out of there. Looks really ugly for him. Um, he's not far from being wrecked either and he's a big 12 pointer so that's going to be painful for the confederate or for the union the thing is the confederates aren't really gaining territory and they can't give up there's a victory point hex somewhere here in the woods so they can't give up this line of attack entirely plus the woods is more valuable uh, with the union i'm having thoughts ah oh, what if i swing into play because these guys are almost out of the battle uh, I'm just struggling, you know, trying to rally them. They keep running back. It's not going to be a coherent attack, really. But if I weaken things too much over here, it might be possible to still advance and, and do some damage. Um, so there's kind of a, well, do you give up the defensive position or do you just ignore them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. And the 7 o'clock Union turn is done. We see Dwight kind of has disengaged and rallied most of his forces down here with the aid of some of his superior commanders. He's still got this one he hasn't gotten. Um, up here we got a couple, I think these are both Shaw's units, kind of stuck in the battle. 
elsewhere. Well, we're trying to pull the whole command back up on Pleasant Hill, except we sent a Hubbard down here to threaten the Confederate right flank of the main assault because I think I can ignore these guys largely. I've stretched out some troops. Lynch has spread out a little bit. We got Hill here. He's beaten up. Uh, Moore is in decent shape though on the wing so I could swing him in if an attack happens. And I've also got my reserves, which are, well, at least these that I could call on if need be. One of the more exciting things, we got a McMillan unit that was commanded, uh, I think, by Emery to go for because McMillan wasn't in range at the time, to go forward and fire on B's uh, dismounted cavalry. They didn't do anything, but uh, they get another shot in if those guys try to withdraw or uh, turn to fire or whatever. Looks like a major Confederate advance is going to hit Dwight, though. He's not going to maintain effectiveness, and that, that's going to be a problem. The thing is, these feats should be largely hidden. Um, it's all on one piece of paper, but essentially both sides should have their own. So, it's not apparent, except in a situation like this, where you have, you know, uh, an entire division or a brigade or something obviously withdrawing. The Confederates aren't sure about the White situation, therefore, but they haven't seen a brigade route, so they're pretty sure he's not broken yet. Um, they don't know what's weak, what's not here. They know they hammered Lynch, but you know, these things, when you're actually playing, usually kind of fade out of your view. I'm going to load this one up, and it's probably it for tonight. We can, I think, do three turns on the next video with the wrap and all and this is not a bad place I, I have to stop for the night but it's not a bad place to uh, end things for now